I'd like to introduce Ravi Devetti with our next talk, A Beginner's Guide to Debian Packaging. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. Just a minute. Hello, uh, I'm audible? Okay. Hi, I'm Ravi Devetti, and uh, I'm here to uh, present you about the Debian packaging for beginners. And first of all, my introduction, I'm from a mathematics background. And um, in Debian, uh, what I do is I'm a part of GitLab packaging team. And I'm kind of doing it for uh, since last one year. So uh, in today, today's tutorial, basically, it's basically a tutorial. And before that, there's a um, like motivational thing. Um, on that you can, I want to convince you that you, uh, convince the beginners that you can do packaging work irrespective of your background, irrespect, uh, it's, it's like nothing hard. And it's very easy to start with and easy to try. And uh, to get you yourself uh, interested into packaging, uh, that's what I aim to do today. Okay, uh, so let's look at what is packaging? So you see on this screen, you are familiar with this. There's a screenshot on the right side. You're probably familiar with the Google Play Store in the Android. And the screenshot is about uh, VLC, downloading VLC for Android. So notice you click Install, and how easy it is to install an app from the Play Store. So that means, uh, I mean, it is because someone packaged it uh, for the Play Store so that the user can install it in just a click. The proper way, the usual way of installing software in any operating system is to compile the source code. If we package the thing, then the users doesn't, don't have to compile the source code themselves. They just, it becomes as easy, easy as clicking a button. And on the left side, the screenshot is of Debian KD, and that ships with a, uh, for me, it shipped with a, uh, app Store, a uh, graphical app store, and there's Caden Live, it's a video editing software, and you know, you see an install button at the top right, and clicking that just installs it. If nobody pack packaged it for Debian, you will have to compile from the source code and do it yourself. So uh, that's the introduction of what is packaging and what is a package. This VLC or Caden Live, the softwares that you use. Uh, in uh, they, they are packages. Basically, in simplistic terms, apps or software is what we mean by packages. But it's a little more, it can be a little more complicated, but it's, it's for beginners, so, uh, yeah. So sometimes I will make some simplifications uh, so that you understand or you can relate to what you already know. So let me tell you my story about packaging, a, li a little into it. So uh, I was, uh, in the college, I read mathematics, so I have not read any, uh, I'm not from a technical background, I have not uh, read a pro, like I, I don't know any programming or anything, or any, anything technical, how to make websites, how do they even work, I didn't know at that time. And after I passed out, for some reason, I liked, when I, when I uh, attended Mini DevConf 21 in India, uh, in 2021, I liked Debian. It was about Debian. And at that time, I was running Mac OS. So I thought, yeah, let's give it a try. And I installed Debian in 2021 uh, in August. And then I met many people uh, from the Debian community, Debian India community. And uh, you know, they taught me packaging. So the screenshot here shows that you know, in a few months after I started learning packaging, I got 10 packages installed into, uh, uploaded into Debian. So uh, this is about my journey. Many people, uh, so this is about my journey into the Debian packaging. Many people ask me how much time it takes or how hard it is and all. So a little bit of context into that. Okay, why do packaging? Uh, as we saw, it makes it easy for users to install. So they click a button, they don't have to compile the source code. 
and it saves time for users. Yeah, because everyone has to then compile, compile the source code. They have to uh, install manually. So everyone's time is now saved when, when we package something. It also saves the storage because if there's a depend dependency, if you if you uh, you know download the dot dev files or something, or if you compile source for everything, so some, sometimes what happens is the apt way um, the, the users basically what they do is they will install dot dev files by several projects, and if there's a dependency in all of those dev dev projects uh, dev files they will be downloaded as much uh, times like each dot dev file will have a copy of the dependency so the same dependency will be um, you know the same dependency will be stored many times in your in your, in your uh, computer and that will also take that may take a significant storage if you have many such packages so if we inst if we package something for debian uh, you know let's say open ssl and there are many, many packages which require OpenSSL as a dependency. So, so OpenSSL is only installed once, and every package can get it. So it saves the storage. And another thing to keep Debian secure. So uh, this has actually two points. One is how Debian works in terms of trust and all, because Debian developers, uh, you have seen about the key signing party, right? So in the key signing party, you sign each other's keys, and this is how Debian's trust management works. It's not like you are downloading things from the random website. Only trusted people can upload to Debian. So there is some security with the packaging thing, because not everyone can upload to Debian, and you don't want to trust random websites for things you download. And to keep, uh, there's another thing for the security is that, let's say you had a package like OpenSSL, or anything which is the dependency for 5,000 packages, if you just, uh, you know, if there are security uh, update for the OpenSSL, then it, it gets fixed for all the packages. But if you se separately install .dev files for many, uh, many packages, then you have to separately and manually uh, update them all. And that is a lot of work, actually. Uh, who can do packaging? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, anyone who is interested can do packaging, and uh, in my experience, I've seen that and uh, that programming skills are generally not required. Yeah, they can come handy if you want to fix bugs or do some modifications. Sometimes uh, that is also needed. But yeah, for beginners to start, you don't have to fear about it if you don't know that. And yeah, no fear of command line if you don't know any command line or, you know, people uh, never used any terminal. You don't have to fear about it. You can start and catch up. Um, it's, it's not a very hard learning curve. OK, so before, basically in this tutorial, what I want to do is I will build a package for you and show how easy it is, and uh, just, a, just a very easy package. So before that, I should tell you the release cycle of Debian. OK, so this is a very simplistic thing. Uh, that I will tell. When there is a package, okay, uh, when we have to upload a package in Debian, you know, let's say Firefox has a new update. It does not go directly to the Debian stable version. It first goes to the unstable, and then it is tested to, like, tested for the RC bugs. Bugs means unintentional pro problems with the programs. The developer want intended the program to work on in one way, but it is uh, unintentionally working in some other way due to some reason. Now, RC bugs means release critical bugs, which means that they are serious enough to cause some harm or problems or uh, with the with the system. So we don't want that in our system. We don't want serious bugs or problems in our system. So in unstable, they in Debian unstable branch, Debian has three branches: unstable, testing, and stable. They first any new package first enters unstable, and in unstable, they are tested for these serious bugs. Okay, they are there for a week, and then they migrate to testing if there are no bugs. Then they are also tested there, and when in, in testing, they, uh, uh, if, if we find a bug, when we then we remove the program from testing, 
and un until unless the, that bug is fixed. And then we, uh, uh, in testing, there is also a freeze. So we freeze this for some time that there will be no new packages in testing. And uh, when the release critical bugs become zero in testing, that becomes stable. So you also see how Debian works. It is a very extensive testing environment. And users are supposed to install the Debian stable version, although they do uh, use testing and unstable in their desktop uh, computers because of ch their choice. But in serious environments like servers or hospitals or government offices, you, you would want to use Debian stable. And this is very rock solid because of this, uh, uh, this kind of t extensive testing of packages and uh, not having bugs. So as you know, every package goes to unstable. So if I want to build a package here, if I want to show you, uh, I need a Debian unstable environment, and uh, I mean that's easy if you have if you if you if the operating system you're using is Debian, so I can show uh, the link here as as the commands. So uh, let me just okay okay so. OK, so you can go to this uh, wiki.debian.org slash packaging slash learn. And this has all the things you need. So we want to set up the uh, SID environment. SID is also another term for Debian unstable. OK, so there are many options. And you can use any of the options which work for you to have a working unstable environment. So what I will choose is second one, which works very well for me. In, in the um, in the Debian, but I already have um, uh, unstable environment. Uh, can I show the terminal? Okay, I should. Okay. <coughs> Just a minute. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm like ready to do this. I think mm. like this, right? Okay, basically, I I already had a Debian unstable setup, but I removed it uh, for now, and I will show you how to set up an unstable environment. It's it's easy, but keep in mind if you have Windows or if you have any other operating system, the steps might be a little different for you. And um, if you have Arch, then Arch Wiki has, uh, I think they have an article on how to configure it. So we need to install these two packages. Um, okay. They're already installed for me. And then we create a directory here. And uh, we use this debut strap to basically install or in what we call initialize Debian unstable in that slash SRV slash Chirut directory. Uh, like this. So basically, it says setting up a Damien's unstable environment. Uh, yeah, it, it will take one or two minutes. Usually, it takes. I'm just keeping them side by side so that you can see.
Okay, so our base system installed successfully and it was installed in this folder. We just have to do one more thing and edit this file. Um, basically, the file at slash etsy slash sch root slash dot d slash Debian set. And we want to go to the users and have my username there. What it will do is that so now we now I had a Debian in my in my Debian operating system in my uh, in my in my computer, but I already installed uh, I also installed Debian Unstable in another folder. I want both to have the same file system because it makes it easy to have uh, file access when I exit from the from that Debian Unstable. Ch uh, usually we call it ch root or change root. I I don't want to go into the, the details, but uh, the thing is, when, when we, uh, the details of Cheroot, but when we ch change back, I have the same file system, so I can do things like, you know, signing with GP, signing my packages with GPG and all, and my GPG keys may, are not in the unstable thing, they are in my main system. So, uh, users is equal to, uh, you pu put your name there, and uh, put your username there, and um, uh, save this file. So, yeah, we are done. So if we run this sch root minus c Debian sid, we are in Debian unstable actually. And um, let me log in using, so if we do the sudo, if we, if we log in using the sudo command, we will have root access there. We will, we will um, I mean, we will be logged in as a, uh, sorry, the command is minus C, minus C, Debian set. I will be a root user here, and I can like say apt update, and it's working. And you can see that the repositories are from the SID, so it's Debian unstable, okay? I, what I like to do is apt install sudo, because Debian does not come uh, with sudo by default, at least in the base install. And I also like editor vim for my, uh, that's my preference, so I'm just installing that. Okay, and um, yeah, I can also now configure the sudoers file. I have to add myself to the sudoer file to have the access of the sudo command. Yeah, you just copy paste this root thing and uh, And Rene, so basically this means that uh, the line I'm on means that the root user has all the permissions to run all the commands. I want Ravi user to also have all the permissions. So I just copy pasted that line and replaced root with Ravi, okay? So let me save this file. Okay, it's like this. And if I exit and now I log in as Ravi in my in my Debian set. Then sudo works. Like for example, sudo apt update. It will ask for password, and it's the password of the default system. So here we have uh, set up a Debian unstable system. The next thing is to have build, is to build a package, and I like I like this. Uh, I mean, I would like this wiki. Uh, this article by Abraham. Abraham is also one of the organizers in this conference. So he wrote an article on for the beginners to build a to uh, build build a package. So okay. So now um, I think I had a pack, I had a Debian packaging named folder which I want to remove. Okay, I will just make one new. So. Let's create a new folder for our packaging work. Go to Debian packaging and CD, uh, sorry, CD, CD means change, you go into that directory. Now what we are doing is we want to build, build the binary from the source code, okay? So we need, need a way to acquire the source code. Okay, for Demonstration purposes, I'm going to package a very simple program. It's named Pretty MS. Uh, here it is written, Pretty MS. And the Pretty MS 
basically what it does it converts milliseconds if you put milliseconds some number like you know 400 milliseconds it will convert it into human readable hours minutes seconds yeah but that doesn't matter the thing is whatever it is we want to package and this is simple enough for a beginner tutorial actual packages they can be uh, they can be as simple as this or they can be more complicated so yeah this one is for the beginner tutorial okay so we want to acquire the source code where where do we get the source code from so i found that the uh, that the pretty ms repository is this one and if you go to the you know uh, the releases section where is that yeah here here you will find all their source code so this is for the version 8 and this is for 7.0.1 and this is 7.0.0 and uh, you know we can package any of of the versions but yeah i will follow this tutorial so this tutorial basically uh, you know this tutorial basically of 7.0.0 so i will do that so the source code is here i mean we can acquire that so we can copy the link of 7.0.0 uh, in the asset section and this is the tar.gz we want this is the source code we want okay so i will wget and uh, uh, basically uh, with the wget i can get the file so i probably need to install wget it is not uh, installed by default in unstable uh, in the base 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 installation i think okay wget and this tar file so we get the tar file here now see ls you see that this tar dot gz is now there okay so debian for the uh, debian has a specific format in which the tarball should be it's package name underscore version dot orange dot uh, tarball format the format here is dot tar dot t dot gz so basically uh, we have to we have to rename it to that format okay so we run mv and the file name and what it what we want it to rename to okay so it's package name let me explain that so the package name was pretty ms then underscore then the version then dot orange dot format but we also added a node what does that mean so it's a javascript package and debian also uh, wants us to write the name of of the package like you know if you have a ruby uh, if you have something written in ruby you will say ruby package name okay uh, if you have you know uh, uh, google app is uh, pubsub v1 that's a ruby package so debian will write it as ruby google app is pubsub v1 okay for javascript the convention is to add a node before the package name so that's why we are doing it for python also there is something i, I i don't know and like for your favorite programming language also uh, there should be something like that so we have just renamed into the format we want and now we want to extract that tar and see what's inside so i will just uh, uh, copy this thing and paste and see so you got a folder named pretty ms but debian wants you to uh, have the programming language name in the start so if it if it was a ruby package then i should rename it as ruby pretty ms 7.0.0 it's a javascript package so i will rename it as node so the same thing the same thing but add a node at the start node minus node hyphen okay so we do that that's the naming convention convention of debian and um, yeah you can look at what is inside that folder we can cd into it and see what's inside there mm, yeah okay so these are the files we have currently in that now there's a there's a there's a package we need to install called dhmake and it will help us so basically debian also wants 
it in a format. We want to have a copyright file, a change log file. We want to track who changed what and when. Uh, so basically, let's say I packaged version 1 and you packaged version 2. Debian wants to know all that. So for, for that, we, we need something like dhmake. And this tutorial actually says use debmake, but the debmake wasn't working. There's prob some problem. So I will instead use dhmake, which, is, which can be used for the same purpose. <coughs> so we have to install sudo apt install dhmake. <coughs> oh, OK, uh, sure. Uh, water? Thanks a lot. Okay. So yeah, we have dhmake installed. Dhmake make is installed now. So we run run the command dh underscore make, and it asks what what type of package is this? Yeah, it's like single package. Are the details correct? I think yes, uh, they are. And it says, OK. Mm, yeah, so basically, it, it, what it did is it created a Debian subdirectory. Uh, where? It created a Debian, sub, sub direct, Debian directory here, which was not already there when we did ls earlier. OK, I can't scroll back there. That's too far, but OK. So we need to, um, now we need to create a source package for this. And for that, we need sudo um, apt install this package called build essential. OK, I already have it. Um, maybe dhmake installs it. <laughs> dpkg source minus b dot. So I use this command to <coughs> use this command to create a source uh, package. OK, my locales failed. So let me just fix that. sudo apt install. Otherwise, it will complain you about the locales. Mm, yeah, dpkg config reconfigure locales. Yeah, when you, uh, when you act I will set up to Indian English. That is my locales. Or whatever yours are, you, you set those. OK. So I think this should work now. OK. So yeah, we got a lot of messages here. Um, I mean, output. but. Uh, I think I will. Yeah, there is a .dsc file here mm, created by this one here inside this. No, okay, no, here in the in the previous directory there's a .dsc file and this is for the integrity of the package. Um, there's some security stuff. There's some checksums there to verify whether the files you have downloaded um, match with what was uploaded in Debian or not. And I will now quickly move on to uh, building packaging package. So yeah, we just have to do this dpkg uh, build package. Um, yeah. But yeah, when you upload to Debian, you basically uh, you know sign your uh, <laughs> sign the package with your GPG keys. And that is what shows that you actually you uh, uh, it was actually you who uploaded it into Debian, 
So every Debian developer does that. But for this tutorial, I will skip that, skip signing the package. So I need to uh, do US minus UC for that. So I want unsigned. I want to build package, but don't want to sign it. OK, so here in our previous directory, you can see we have a .dep file. And we have actually built the package correctly. Now, the further modifications are usually for the Debian's, um, Debian's guidelines. They, so Debian wants your control files and uh, changelog files and copyright files. There are, I will show you those files inside the, they are in the Debian folder, OK? There are files like you know, changelog, control. Let's, let's go to one of these files, control file, OK? Now the control file says, OK, sorry, I should not maybe use, OK. I should not probably use Vim for this, but no Vim. OK, I will just show you this file in a minute. OK, so Debian slash control file. You will see that it has, you know, uh, many things need fixing. So the home page of the URL, it's not there, and section is unknown. So it's a JavaScript package, so we should probably add section JavaScript uh, or JS. I don't know what they put exactly in JavaScript, but I think, uh, OK, JavaScript or JS. I have to look at it. But anyways, the point is that you have to, uh, like, you can look, look at Debian guidelines and see that uh, what changes you have to make and run something called Lintium, Lintium program, and that will, like, check what's the, uh, the that will check for all the uh, errors, I think. Okay, I think that also needs installation. Oh, it's a uh, fine program. OK, so if you, if you run Lintian, it will tell you, uh, it will tell you what, what are the errors and what are the warnings all you need to fix before uploading to Debian. OK, so uh, yeah, I mean, we can go on. And then what we do is, this is a JavaScript package. We contact, uh, you will typically contact JavaScript team and send a request for a sponsorship email to them and uh, push your uh, repository to Salsa. So uh, I'm not covering all that here, but just we have built it successfully. And uh, I think um, the beginner tutorial will end here. So uh, thanks a lot and I, for, the, for your time. And uh, yeah, I just want to say, if you're a beginner and you're afraid of you know, trying out the Debian packaging thing, uh, this this tutorial uh, you can see and there. Uh, remember this, maybe note this. Uh, note this URL. You can go there and it has good resources. So let me just make it full screen. You can see. Um, learn so wiki org slash packaging with a capital P slash learn with a capital L. And if you need any help, there are uh, you are in DevConf, and for uh, there's a boot camp going on in the DevConf. Uh, you can ask for help there, and also there are I think other talks and other sessions. Uh, there there are probably more detailed and uh, longer than mine. So yeah, feel free to ask for help in those places in online forums, and yeah. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for your time. Yes, All right, we have a few minutes for questions. Hi. Um, so just to, to close this session, uh, this workflow, uh, when you send to the team, what is what do they do? Like the 
uploader would rebuild the package or what would they, because you created, you created Deb, like, but what exactly do the uploader get and send to Debian repositories? They do a source, they do a source on the upload in the, in the Debian repository uh, with their, uh, and the package is signed with their GPG keys. So the thing is, when you are uh, packaging something as, uh, and as a beginner, I assume that you don't have uploading rights to Debian, so only Debian developers get those rights. So, yeah, basically, you have to send mail because, first of all, it's a teamwork. Even if you can upload it, sometimes uh, you need collaboration. And second thing is that you don't have uploading, uploading rights. And what they upload is the, this is the source thing on, on th th this is called source only upload. So they don't directly upload this .dev file, they will upload the. So basically you just give your repository, they will get your source. Yeah. And yeah. rebuild and send. Yeah, yeah. So basically I have like send it with my key, put it on salsa, salsa.debian.org. Hold on. Is there any constraint on the language? Like, uh, do we do the languages should be on JavaScript or like that, or can we use any other language like Rust, Python? Yeah, you can package in any language. There are Debian. Has, I, I, well, I don't know if Debian has does not have a team for an, for a language. Uh, if anyone knows, they can uh, like chip in. But Debian has team for I think almost all the languages, and you can collaborate with them to package specific to that language. Like, I mean, like, using these steps, can we package any language releases? Yeah, yeah. The, the, but the thing is, the, the, the language teams have specific tools, like, uh, for example, Ruby team has something like gem to dev package, and that makes it e easier. So in practice, nobody does it like that. So gem to dev means, you know, Ruby gems, they convert to dev files. And JavaScript team has something else, I think, npm to dev or something. Uh, so they have a specific tools for their languages as, as well, and they also want to run a lot, lot of tests. Uh, yeah, it's complicated. So they, they do have a specific tools. And in practice, they don't do it like this. Also, one more. Um, so we, when we pull it from the git, git right, uh, and uh, we pull the release, so that will be uh, automatically packaged the, uh, we, do we have to package it when the new version comes, or does it happen? There's a, there's a, there's a Debian. So you saw that there was a Debian folder, yeah. and usually there's a they create a watch file. So the maintainers create a watch file. In the watch file, they know uh, it is written what is the upstream link, and you saw that there was a newer version, 8.0.0. The watch file can automatically fetch the tar.gz for those things. So you don't have to do it every time, manually. All right, I think we're out of time. But let's, uh, everyone, give Ravi a round of thanks for his talk. <laughs>